These are our shipping containers in the Lordstown plant parking lot. I found out something about it. Hi, this is MXUX. Um, this is the November 1021 document that's on the Lordstown uh, website. And we have uh, November 1021. Taipei, Taiwan, that is Foxconn, is a tai, Taiwan company or uh, whatever you want to call it. Let's call it Taiwan. Uh, Lordstown Motors, AIP with Foxconn. Uh, Foxconn started by f purchasing 50 million of common stock at $7 a share. Um, and then they went into the APA. Asset Purchase Agreement. So, Foxconn is in for $50 million in stock. LMC uh, decided to sell the Lord's Time for excluding certain assets, such as the hub motor assembly line and battery module pa and pack lines, for $230 million. It was mentioned in an S-1 filing that Foxconn has and this is an expansion of this statement uh is going to run the the hub motor uh assembly line which is new so that implies that they are going to be making a lot of hub motors i would think uh for 230 million the down per uh down payment was uh 100 million so they're, they're in 150 million and subsequent payments of fifty million uh, on February first. That's two hundred million, and uh, no later than April fifteenth is another uh, fifty million. So that's uh, uh, that's a hundred million. This is in addition to the stock mentioned above. So they got fifty million in stock. They got a hundred million in, in cash. Another fifty, and another fifty. That's 200 and the balance of the purchase price will be paid at closing, which is, uh, and this is no later than April 15th, another $50 million. Uh, balance of the purchase price, which will be $30 million plus associated costs, which we're going to go over later in this video, and that will be paid at closing. Uh, pursuant to, uh, <clears throat> the parties agreed to pursue a contract for the endurance pickup, which must be entered into before closing, per, uh, a contract manager, manufacturing agreement entered into before closing. And this is a modifier that I didn't notice before, currently targeted by April 30th. So the drop dead date is April 30th, but currently targeted. Whether that can be changed or will be changed remains to be seen. That is interesting. Um, so. You got a payment April 15th. Uh, by that time, they're going to have 250, uh, you know, uh, 200 million in uh, cash and 50 million in stock. Uh, so that's uh, 250 million, uh, and the balance is going to be 30 plus expenses. So, you know, um, Foxconn is in pretty deep, 280 million. Although they're the size of Google, so what does that matter, right? And again, currently targeted for April 30th, okay? Um, Co-designed and developed vehicle programs for the global commercial fleet market. So their intentions is uh, fr fleet market priority. I think I spelled that wrong there. Um, so using the MIH platform. So they're looking at fleet vehicles using the MIH platform. This would imply a high top van. I'm not sure. Light pickup truck, of course. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, now, Lordstown and Foxconn would have the right to commercialize these new EV vehicles in North America and internationally. The implication I had read before was that Foxconn would have international, Lordstown would have domestic, but we don't know how that is going to work out. Um, so interesting. This is a modifier. 
currently targeted is a modifier I didn't notice before. So April 30th is drop dead, but currently targeted. Global commercial fleet market is the MIH. Uh, the two vehicle programs which they plan to do for MIH, which are fleet uh, uh, vehicles. By the way, Lordstown has a van, high top van, and a three row SUV. Whether those would be considered fleet mark vehicles, it's hard to say. But uh, anyway. I had speculated in a previous video that the MIH was going to employ hub motors. I don't know. It looks like that might be the case to me. Upon closing, Foxconn will receive uh, 2 million warrants to acquire Lordstown Com Common Stock for three years at a price of ten fifty per share. So, a million warrants, uh, 2 million warrants... Uh, at 1050 a share, uh, that is uh, what is that, uh, 20 30 million dollars. But if the price goes up substantially, that could also uh, be quite lucrative. So, uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty even handed sale here, they're getting quite a bit of stock out of the deal. That's a pretty good deal on the warrants. I think should this deal close over the course of three years, 1050 is going. I would expect the the stock could. Oh well, we're not even going to get into that now. But that would be those those warrants could be worth some money. Okay, closing requires a regulatory approvals. So, Cephas has to close, too. So, again, the currently targeted is new to me. Global Fleet is the MIH program. Then the, the DJ Dan said two vehicles. They can do it in 24 months. Uh, right to commercialize these new EV programs in North America and internationally. And, of course, this Foxconn getting these warrants is new to me, too. Now, and Cephas we knew about. Now, here, uh, Han Hai CEO says, Integrating our resources with Lordstown Motors to develop Ohio into Han Hai's most important electric vehicle R&D manufacturing and R&D hub in North America. Is the implication there hub motors? Because that is... The R&D that Nordstown Motors has been spending all this, a lot of this money on. Um, so, would they said North America and internationally, perhaps the North American MIH vehicles will have hub motors. The international MIH vehicles will have regular motors. This is, this is an idea. That's something that could be in the works. Okay. And for Lordstown's point of view, uh, common components and shared overhead causes. Uh, significantly reduce its raw material component and other input costs. Significantly reduce the cost and uh, mitigate supply chain risk. So Lordstown Motors is going to get a really going to lower their uh, uh, bill of materials with this merger and their supply chain risk it's a big positive for them uh foxconn is the benefit and lmc the benefit from foxconn's expertise in hardware software integration critical to evs given their experience so looks like uh one of the things that a commenter had mentioned was the MIH self-driving software. Fleet vehicles, self-driving software. Hub motors. I imagine Han Hai is farther ahead on the software aspect of self-driving uh, than they are in the vehicle manufacturing itself. Anyway, interesting. A few things there to take out of that agreement. And of course... 
what this basically says is this is all this money, uh, this $230 million plus the other monies that are going to be paid. Uh, you can go through those numbers again. They're, eventually, they, they're, they're fronted to Lordstown, in effect. And on the condition that this deal closes, that includes them reaching the vehicle, the uh, manufacturing agreement for endurance pickup truck. Um, so the contract manufacturing agreement must be entered into before closing. Now, it says that um, the co-designed vehicle programs seem to be a separate entity or a separate item according to this press release. So, really, the contract manufacturing agreement for endurance pickup truck is the critical thing at this point. Let's let's just say at this point in the in the APA. Uh, so, we've got the contract manufacturing agreement and the CFAS regulatory approval. These are the two items. That we have to have done by the April 30th drop dead date, which is currently targeted. See what that means to you. Anyway, there's some interesting things here, some interesting breadcrumbs here for sure. And um, let's move on to the next section. The Fox kind of, this is from the deep dive. Not real familiar with this. Uh, publication but this is somewhat dated february 12 2022 uh young lee the chairman of han high the endurance will begin rolling off the ohio assembly line in the second half of 2022 which is the same thing w w which uh, dj dan has said um there's some concern they're not yet turning their mid-November 2020 agreement, 21 agreement into a contract. So, they're bringing it up. Lordstown and Foxconn will pursue a contract manufacturing agreement, so Foxconn will manufacture Lordstown Endurance all-electric pickup truck. Uh, now, the other side of this coin is, I have down here, the... Uh, LMC needs the fees, basically, from, uh, at least at this point, it appears they need the fees. We don't know what the payments exactly are going to be that they're going to be reimbursed with. Uh, and we're going to, uh, that uh, that uh, Foxconn is going to reimburse them for. We don't know what that amount is. But as of right now, they need the, the, the fees for the two MIH vehicles, fleet vehicles, which they're going to develop to pay for the contract manufacturing of the Lordstown Endurance. Uh, it is unknown whether the $50 million payment due on February 1 has been made. Uh, Lordstown did not file an 8K. I don't know if that came out in the last earnings call, uh, but I, I believe this payment has been made. As I said, this is somewhat dated. They do some uh, obvious discussion about cash burn, which we all understand that Lordstown is under the gun and uh, even in the best case is going to have to raise money. What we're, we're concerned with right now is the um, completion of this agreement. Fox not, now this is a, a statement they make. Foxconn has not always honored at least the spirit of agreements Foxconn has reached in the U.S., and they're talking about Wisconsin here. And Wisconsin was a deal they made. And they were going to build a plant from scratch. And what they did was they got the Lordstown deal. And they said, wait a minute, Wisconsin. We don't have to spend $3 billion. I think the replacement cost on the Lordstown plant is something like $3 billion. Uh, we can buy a plant for, you know, $250 million. We're not going to build a plant from scratch in Wisconsin. This is rather unfair because they, they were faced with a business decision there. But 
Also, they have stated clearly that this is going to be their cloud-based data center uh, for their cars for the over-the-air updates and likely, um, you know, self-driving, I would imagine. Um, they're saying here the jobs created uh plan investment of six, 600 million would create just now this is the data center okay so they scaled that down i don't think this is a fair comparison i mean any i mean they would have been fired if they didn't take this deal and change their mind on this uh does it say something yes you're gonna have to decide how much weight you give to that however they are going to utilize the area the thing and uh, and it will be a data cloud data center which is important okay now uh they they have to begin endurance deliveries begin in 2h uh, 2022 uh, if flex kind of hears to and closes its agreement with lordstown which would allow the endurance uh, deliveries to begin. This is something we all got to remember, deliveries. This is starting in June 2022, which is, you know, a couple of months away. Uh, would rep represent a constructive development for Lordstown. However, if this schedule were to be the delayed, the list of Lordstown challenges will grow longer as significant cash bleed for, will persist for a number of quarter further equity issuances are likely so again we're all tied to this schedule right now and this is actually something that is you know a blind man could see so that's what the status is there now let's move down here uh both of them say uh the Foxconn chairman and DJ Dan have both said second half. Now this, I have news here in red. This is news to me. According to import data, Lordstown Motors has received almost 500 shipping containers from Great Tech and Assembly Line Manufacturer. The weight of these shipments exceeds 25,000 tons. This is far greater than just a hub motor and battery line. Okay, so they are making massive improvements to the plant. This is what Lordstown is spending money on. They're talking about retooling. What are they retooling for? Are they retooling for the high top van? Are they... You know, they're just say, stating retooling in general. Perhaps they don't want to show their hand. Perhaps they're sandbagging. But anyway, they just said right here, just this is more than, than can be justified by a hub motor and battery line. Lordstown, according to the agreement, will be reimbursed for certain expenditures uh, effective September 1 of last year by Foxconn. So Lordstown is buying all this stuff and in installing it and this is what foxconn is going to reimburse them for some people have said it's for plowing snow in the parking lot i don't think so i think this is more in line and i think that amount is going to be higher than other people think and i think that uh, the cash burn they've been making has been getting plowed into this stuff to start up this production in two months okay I think this is all going behind the curtain with DJ Dan being the great Oz. There's nothing to see here, but we will have to see. But this certainly is news. Uh, 500 shipping containers is a lot. I mean, if you look at the video, my past videos, I have video of this, uh, these containers in the parking lot. So big deal. 25,000 tons. So what the heck? What the what? Clearly the agreement, uh, the, now key staff have already moved over to Foxconn. Clearly the agreement is progressing as, per, as planned. Furthermore, Foxconn projects $720 million 
in EV production for its 2020 year. And I have calculated this out. Foxconn has no other plant this close to production. Natural conclusion that this is for endurance contract manufacturing for the endurance. So, uh, 720 million in production. I just uh ran that number using the present sale retail sale price of the endurance that's about 12,000 units uh now they say 2020 year is this i don't know what kind of bookkeeping they're using 2020 i think that's a typo but uh so that's about 12,000 units that is significantly higher than the 500 um, Lordstown has stated, and then the following year, 2000. So they have stated, let's say, 3000. This implies four times that. So, very interesting. Uh, do your own DD on this, but this is all news to me. And uh, that is the end of the article. So, is the actual production 12,000 units? What is this time frame? What is this 2020? What does that mean? Is that a type? That's obviously a typo, I think. But this this is 12K units about... 12,000 endurance. So, um, massive 500 shipping containers, 25,000 tons. These are going to Lordstown. Is Lordstown going to be reimbursed for all of this? Is this the retooling? What the heck? 25,000? I don't know. Is that a lot? 500 shipping containers is a lot of shipping containers. What is that? I don't know how much those ships hold, but that's, that seems to be a lot to me. Anyway, they're going to be reimbursed for 500 shipping containers. Man, this is uh, these numbers are new to me and bigger than I uh, imagined. So, pretty interesting stuff. Okay, in this section... Uh, this is from uh, Honhai Foxconn's news center. Full year financial report has three rates and three right. This is a translation, so it's a little off. But uh, this is uh, 316, so March 16th. Fourth quarter legal 16th and that's 21 uh, annual report. Okay. Looking forward, revenue of, I don't know if this is Taiwanese dollars, 5.99 trillion, increase of 12%, gross profit of 362 billion, increase of 20%, net profit of 49 billion, increase of 34%, and a net profit of 139 billion, increase, annual increase of 37%. I have down here, wow, like Google, I don't care if these are won or what this dollar denomination is, you know, a billion here, a billion there. Let's talk about a trillion here, a trillion there. That's a lot of money. One of the senators said it, you know, pretty soon you're talking about a lot of money. This is big business, okay? <laughs> I just want everybody to get an idea. Everybody sees Foxconn. These guys are big. All right. Biggest Google, biggest, biggest Facebook. Okay. Um, they go over the quarterly report here. In addition to the operating outlook for the first quarter of 2022, Chairman Liu also explained six major axes of the group's uh, operations this year. Number one is ICT. Uh, Blah, 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 uh, integrated circuit technology, I believe that is. The second one is electric vehicles. Uh, 
commercial and mass production of electric vehicles. This year's revenue would be dominated by components and software. It expected to start mass production of Lordstown Motor electric pickup truck to Ohio plant the second half of the year. And I have, this is a major mention. This is in their, you know, annual report. This is a big deal to them. The, uh, you know, the U.S. isn't recognizing the sleeping giant here. But I have down here, hmm, does not mention contract manufacturing. Will start mass production. So we're looking forward to that. But anyway, semiconductors are important to them. The chip shortage. They recently bought a foundry, a chip foundry. Uh, groups, uh, vertical integration of the group EV into semiconductors. They're going to, you know, they're going to have a totally integrated supply line. Uh, production capacity supply line. Develop wafers. Uh, okay, so in other words, they're going to make their own. They're going to have the entire process in house. Uh, software layout. So these are so electric vehicles and chips and integrated circuit technology are all the same basically. Software defined defined vehicles key development. Uh, what does that mean? Does that mean self driving? I don't know. The ecosystem of electric vehicles and the metaverse. I think something was lost in translation there, but it is definitely the connect collected car connected car um han hai build operate localize cooperation model this is a model they were using uh with the 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 their other com uh, manufacturing this is where they go into a country and um basically you know in in the case of lord's time become an american company function in the norms of that society and and keep local uh, North America, Taiwan, and group will continue all around the world and Mexico. They mentioned here specifically. Now, the EV, they're talking about the EV industry. So this is Lordstown, build, operate, localize. <clears throat> Han Hai will provide complete vehicles. Again, lost in translation. Three electric vehicles. Okay, what DJ Dan, CEO Dan, has said, endurance is one of them, and their uh, contract with Hanhai is going to be two MIH vehicles. So I am saying that these are the three electric vehicles that they are mentioning in their report, their um, annual report. So you can see how integral Lordstown is to this giant company and as we go down here foxconn largest enterprise in taiwan 5.99 trillion again a trillion here a trillion there pretty soon you're talking about some real money electric vehicles digital health and robot robots okay that's what they're going into artificial intelligence semiconductor and next generation communication three plus three so they're going to apply all these three artificial intelligence semiconductors and next generation communication to electric vehicles but i just thought it was interesting uh to see and here's the principles um what a very large company this is and how prominent a role electric vehicles and Lordstown Motors <clears throat> plays in this reporting. I think this is, uh, and this is this is recent, so this is a big deal too. I think this is another breadcrumb. People are underestimating the grandiose nature of this deal when uh ceo dan says he's all in and you know all in implies make doing a big deal and this is going this is 
a big deal. You've seen from the last section. I think people are underestimating this deal. We're all hoping that it's going to go through by this deadline. All right, let's move on to the next section. This is February 28th, 2022. <coughs> what is this? Um, this is before the Q4 call, I believe. Again, they say build 500 this year and 2,500 trucks in 2023. My information has, for, for that previous article, is 12,000 units. Um, the MIH trucks uh, vehicles, fleet vehicles, which were defined earlier, unless that has changed, Hightower said we can have those up <clears throat> and running in 24 months. So, we got a discrepancy here. We got 12K per the other, which was a translation. Could be wrong. Do your own DD. And this is 2,500. So, we got three times as many trucks being built. According to the other information I've discovered there, um struggling blah 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 la, la 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 now i have here and this public i i downloaded this actually on four or five so this is february 28th has now pushed manufacturing to the q third quarter of 2022 now it's moved from the third quarter Okay, and it's it, it's updated to the second half. So that's three months earlier. That's June, July. So have they pushed the production back up? Because this at this point it was Q3, and I remember it was Q3. Now they're saying second half. I guess it could be either or. Distinction without a difference. And Dan says, uh, made substantial progress on the terms of our contract manufacturing agreement, subject to re review by the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. So, um, I don't know if he's implying that it's done and it's being reviewed, but anyway, uh, the point is these are both things that have to happen before any of this other stuff happens. Um, going down, we can say, uh, we understand that raising additional capital in the near term is critical to the successful launch of the endurance and execution of our operating plan. Yes, we know this. Um, this is a high risk investment. Um, if the stars align and this deal goes through, which I think it will, hopefully, uh, they should not have any trouble raising capital. And this production number is 12K per, per the other information I have there, which could be wrong. But uh, anyway, it's moved from Q3 to second half. Moved up three months, potentially, the start of production. And the output, according to this info here, has uh what uh quadrupled so anyway something to think about akron beacon journal okay bubba bubba i'm sorry i can't let you out right now okay this is mxux that is the cat the uh this is the local business journal which has gone hostile on lordstown and as part of the local, you know, I have a short and distort video coming out. I believe all these news outlets are influenced, in my opinion, um, by these shorting actions. Now, this is Mar mid March 2022, Dan O'Brien. This is kind of a summary here. Proposed partnership between Lordstown and, and Foxconn is still on the ropes as the clock ticks towards a deadline of April 30 to make a break deal for the local electric startup. <coughs> is it on the ropes? This is local reporting. Do they have 
in, inside information there that other people don't? I don't know. On March 8th, stock, which trades under this dip below two, $2 a share. Of course, now it's above 3 340 today, I believe. Uh, Morgan Stanley, Stanley said it would discontinue coverage uh, in October. Uh, downgrading ride to equivalent of a sell rating. Well, you know, uh, the, the, the latest analyst ratings are hold, and I believe they have a $4 price. This is a turnaround, okay, so uh, it's straight up from here if everything works. This is basically the bottom. And we'll go into why that is in a minute. Uh, much of the market's pessimism stems from uncertainty over the proposed agreement with Foxconn and whether a deal can be reached at all. Now, the prior information seem, seems to indicate that a deal was chugging along or is chugging along. Um, but this is... What they say, the deal is uh, contingent on both parties arriving on a joint development agreement, which Foxconn would manufacture future Lordstown vehicles on Foxconn's Mobility and Harmony platform. So, the new concept of two new vehicles, which Lordstown Motors would develop for Foxconn, will badge Lawrencetown Motors fleet vehicles and will be on the MIH platform. Now, it just occurred to me that they're talking about there's domestic and international distribution of these vehicles. Could it be that the domestically uh, produced fleet vehicles will have hub motors and the internationally distributed Fleet vehicles will have the MIH motor design. Is this what we're getting at here? I don't know. There's so many permutations and combinations. You tell me. But <clears throat> I am disappointed. Uh, we're not further along. Dan Niavaji told us. Uh, the relationship is very positive and discussions are ongoing. But we need to bring that to a conclusion. Okay. Now, this is new, and I don't know if this is conjecture on the writer's part or if he has information. A sticking point to the entire agreement appears to be, is this his opinion, whether Foxconn is willing to fund production of current and future Lordstown motor vehicles in its MIH platform. Uh, he's mixing up Lordstown Motors and MIH here. Um, my understanding of the way this is going to work is that uh, Lordstown Motors is going to facilitate the design and manufacturing of these MIH vehicles, two vehicles. The fees from those services are going to go to finance the commercial production of the Lordstown Motors Endurance. Snake eating its own tail. Um, you have to do your own DID on this. Seems to me like the writer here is a little confused, or I'm a little confused. And I said earlier, um, the thing is we could have the there's internet american and international distribution of these mih vehicles the american since lord sound motors has the north american rights could the north american models have hub motors and the international models have the uh mih platform motors this is you know i mean there's many permutations and combinations this is the first i've i've heard of this uh, it, uh, I mean, um, is willing to fund production. Uh, the idea is once the deal's done, they agree to make the fees on the other uh, vehicles. 
Lordstown Motors uh, is going to have a deal in hand. They're going to go to the market. They're going to be able to raise money to start commercial production, play, pay the fees for the initial start of production on the Lordstown Endurance. Once it gets rolling, the fees from the MIH platform is going to uh, be the flywheel that's going to power start the whole production thing going. Um, this is a new uh, new revelation here to me. I it's um, again is this conjecture appears to be. I don't know. However, the deal is not done. Uh, deliveries of 500 vehicles during the third quarter. The company has lowered its production goal to just 2,500 vehicles. Again, this is conflicting with the other information I gathered. Four times that production. However, which number is right? We don't really know. Do your own DD. Uh, while Navaji remains confident agreement can be reached by April 30, the company needs to raise cash, about 250 to keep operations afloat for the rest of this year should the deal fail to close it could mean the end for lordstown motors and you know of course this is the risk that everyone that is holding this stock or buying this stock is willing to deal with and you have this is a high risk investment i am not a financial advisor this is a this is a case study and it's about the myth of entrepreneurship in America. But uh, this is an accurate statement. Q's views. Uh, shout out to Q's views. I don't always agree with Q, uh, but I do value his uh, output. And um, this is something that he has been talking about in his videos. Um, However, I have a, a slightly different opinion than him. I'm a more optimistic uh, point of view on this. Uh, Foxconn down payment. Still, Lordstown needs to re raise more company capital in the coming months, critical to its survival. And once the deal is done, I believe they can do that. Um, opens the door for Foxconn to potentially take possession of the 6.2 million company land without committing a deal to manufacture Lordstown vehicles. And uh, again, if the deal doesn't close, the money has been fronted to Lordstown and this is going to cause uh, it's kind of an unsecured loan, which they've secured with the property. Um, and this is a true statement. However, I think lawsuits would ensue, and I don't know exactly how this would end up coming out. And it is the worst case, worst case scenario. I don't think it's just that easy uh, to unwind all this. But that's my opinion. Do your own DD. Uh, should Foxconn agreement not close, Lordstown Motors is likely to have some available cash to replay. And again... This is all known stuff that's been around for a while. And again, do your DD. This is the risk you take investing in this company. Navaji told analysts it's highly unlikely the deal would fall through and the company wasn't at a point of seeking other financing options. Um, you know, does the prior information I dug up here uh, confirm this? Are they driving a hard bargain right down to the deadline? Are they, you know, obviously there was a lot of momentum coming up to this deadline. We got all those shipping containers. We got all those improvements. We got a lot of stuff going on. Okay. And this is the advanced vehicle manufacturing loan. Um, I was never a one who thought that uh, Lordstown would qualify for this. They always seem to give it to the wrong companies. Uh, they're going to produce Fisker Pear at this plant. Foxconn is, at, at least the plan is. Fisker got the ATVM loan. But, uh, you know, millions of dollars went bankrupt. Okay? So, I don't think Lordstown was ever a candidate for this. 
in my opinion. However, Foxconn is very good at getting these loans and should uh, Lordstown and Foxconn enter into this joint venture. Uh, that shine would rub off on Lordstown, and uh, I believe the amount they applied for actually was $250 million, Lordstown. But I have never been uh, counting on that. Now, the deal with Yaa is not likely to use enough capital to sustain Lordstown operation, uh, given the rock bottom price. The theory is, and I think this is correct, especially with the macro environment we're dealing with now in oil and gas prices the theory is that with a deal the stock price will rise okay and i think that's probably accurate do your own dd on this please um we are all in with foxconn and very confident we can make this relationship work clearly we and foxconn have more work to do more work what what is the operational definition of more work to do we've got matt well you've seen the other information i've presented here um they had mentioned that uh unwilling to pay for the production i think that is a misstatement by the author here but is it something major is it something minor is there a deal breaker um we don't know steve burns selling off a lot of stock he still holds 18 percent of the company 35 million shares i don't think that's an issue i think he's just winding down his position to retire and pay his legal fees um legal battles okay lawsuits uh 17 lawsuits okay let's just go through a couple of these this karma automotive says they poached their employees okay i have a bit of a background in recruiting i've read up a bit on this uh particular uh lawsuit i'm not a lawyer i do not believe uh, you know, these are not indentured servants. They have a right to move to a new job. If they don't take proprietary information with them, there is no law lawsuit. I don't believe uh, there are any facts for this case to turn on. I think this is a, a BS case, okay? I think these guys might have been looking for a quick settlement. You cannot... You know, it, it is totally legal to change jobs, to move, to be headhunted. As long as you do it within the law and follow the provisions of your contract and don't take proprietary information and so forth, trade secrets, and that is not what this is about, I don't believe. Uh, I don't think there's anything to this lawsuit. This is... Uh, this is under appeal. This was a payment for a utility bill. They made, you know, the, the late fee on the payment was more than the bill, basically. And they paid the bill. It was, it was a clerical error. They said an over, over, they overlooked it, whatever. The point is, it's under appeal because the amount is, uh, it's, you know, it's bullshit. It, it, this is another, in my opinion. Now, 15, uh, Shareholder lawsuits have been filed. This is short and distort actions, in my opinion, okay? And I've got a video coming out on short and distort, which I keep threatening to put out, and I'm going to put it out. Um, this is what the short and distort people do. Hindenburg, uh, Hindenburg published a research report. You know, this is bullshit. It's not a research report. It's a short and distort report. and uh, please watch my video on short and distort, and we're, we're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about how, how the Department of Justice is investigating this company, and how this whole worst kept secret of how this market manipulation goes on. And one of the things these firms do, allegedly, is after they put their report out, you know, they buy some stock and then they file shareholder lawsuits 
uh, to give gravitas and weight to their report. I believe these are all, or at least a lot of them are, based on this short and distort. By the way, this report was not factual, and it is a textbook case of not factual, uh, in my opinion, allegedly not factual. It's a textbook case of short and distort. This is why. I, and I want to ask everyone watching a question. Why does China have 50 mass production companies, mass producing electric vehicles? They have BYD, they have NEO, they have uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 different brands. They're all taking market share. It's, it's more capitalistic than our country. We have one. Okay? Right now, that's in mass production, Tesla. You know why? This is why. Short and distort. There are interests uh, in the economy that are destroying this sector. Uh, they're, they're, any of these, uh, you look at Hindu, I mean, I'm not going to go through the details. You can, you can look at yourself. These re so-called research firms aren't research firms, and they are hurting our economy, and, you know, and they are damaging our stance. I mean, with the macro events that are going on, if things develop in a bad way, we're going to be in a bad spot because we are not going to have enough electric vehicles. Anyway, these companies are doing no one any good except the insiders who buy their reports. And they are destroying a sector of our economy. And that's why this case study is called the myth of entrepreneurship in America. Uh, you have someone like Steve Burns, innovator, creator. What happens? You know, he's facing criminal prosecution. Oh, unbelievable. Department of Justice. Well, you know, see what I mean? Um, anyway. In here it says, you know, Steve Burns in 21 that had secured hundreds of million dollars in pre-orders from customers. You know, Steve Burns... Yeah, everybody's looking at this. No, nobody's taking into account what was going on at the time, Steve Byrne. You look at the demand for the Ford Lightning, okay? When the Endurance came out, there was no Ford Lightning. There was not another electric pickup truck in the country, in the world. Of course, they had large orders. They were the first. But, you know, the short and distort made sure that they... They were, uh, they drowned the baby in the bathwater. Okay. So, um, anyway, I think uh, Steve Burns is going to be exonerated on those charges. Anyway, so this is, a, this is an eye opening article as well. It's a good idea to keep all this stuff in mind. Uh, we're not seeing any sources quoted for this information. Appears to be. You know, this statement is the real statement here. Is this factual? Is this conjecture? Do your own DD. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, Foxconn is willing to fund the production of current. Of course, Foxconn uh, could certainly afford to fund the production, uh, and it would behoove them to do so. Um, I'm of the opinion they would not cannibalize their first uh, manufacturing partner because they want to do contract manufacturing. It would set a bad precedent precedent for future um, clients. And, you know, it would, uh, I mean, I don't see any reason to do it. This is a 2 plus 2 equals 6 deal here. Anyway, this was just another article, another point of view. Let's move on to the next section. Okay, I want to end this with uh, some footage of these shipping containers at Lordstown. This was quite snowy, but uh, what did they say? Uh, you can see how many tons and how many, what was it, 2,500 uh, shipping containers were sent to Lordstown. 
and these improvements um, likely would have been paid by Lordstown. So this is what they're spending their money on there at Lordstown, and these are capital improvements to the plant, which uh, from September 1, which is prior to any of this, Foxconn should uh, reimburse. So anyway, that's what we're looking at. This is an update, the good, the bad, and the ugly on the for Lordstown uh, Foxconn deal. And this is MXUX signing off. Uh, I'm going with what DJ Dan says. He says he's confident. Some of the other information I have uncovered appears to be, at least at some point, there has been a lot of activity that would indicate on the pro side of a deal being done. Do your own DD. This is an extremely high risk investment. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm not a financial advisor. Good luck in the market.